Hi, Todd from Inner Fidelity here. Today we're going to talk about quite an inexpensive headphone, dare I say a cheap headphone. This is the uh, Sennheiser HD 471i. There's an HD 471g. The i is for uh, Apple iOS compatible uh, remote control and cable and the G has an Android compatible cable. So there's two versions of this head one, headphone, one for the your iPhone and one for an Android phone. <clears throat> uh, this is a full size uh, sealed headphone. Oh, I should say uh, it uh, on the Sennheiser website, the manufacturer suggested retail price is $106 or $109, but the street price for this headphone goes for about $69. So this is a relatively inexpensive headphone for sure. This is a, a full-size over-ear sealed headphone. Uh, it's just a plain headphone. There's no wireless functions or anything like that. Um, uh, but it's very low cost and it's uh, interesting to see after my review of the Cowan E7 where it was cheap done very poorly how well cheap can be done uh, with uh, when you've got somebody like Sennheiser exerting their mastery over something. So this is uh, relatively inexpensive plastic. It's not memory foam underneath. Um, it's very lightweight. When I first picked it up I went, oh this is really light. Uh, worried about it a little bit. There's no metal to be seen when you pull things apart and look at it. It's all plastic. Uh, but it has a very nice uh, um, look to it. It looks like a lot like their Sennheiser uh, 500 series uh, headphones. Um, it's got this cool uh, uh, cover on the ear capsules that kind of makes a, a wavy pattern when you move it around, which is uh, interesting and nice, but it's still just plastic. So it's inexpensive, but it's a good looking headphone. Um, I would say uh, rather masculine and uh, has a weighty um, design element, design to it. It's It's got some heft. Um, so good looking headphone. Um, the padding, as I said, is in kind of marginal with foam like this. A lot of times that can be bothersome, but the headphone is so light that uh, it really exerts very little pressure. Um, the clamping pressure for me, my head's a little bit bigger norm than normal, was a little bit strong. And um, so I stretched the headband out, which you have to do by holding it here so you're not bending where the uh, uh, extender arms go into the headphone. But if you grab it here, you can bend it out quite nicely. And, and believe me, this thing is extremely um, durable. Sennheiser's got a great materials analysis laboratory and that I, I got to witness in person. And I, I know for a fact that these guys really understand plastics and, and materials. And so they do a fabulous job in that regard. Um, the, uh, it comes with two cables. This is the uh, microphone uh, cable. Uh, it terminates in a very slender and nice uh, 3.5 millimeter tip ring ring sleeve jack or plug. And then there is a longer cable, uh, a 10 foot long cable that's just a straight cable, no remote control on it. But the interesting part about the cable, it has this molded piece. It uses these 2.5 millimeter plugs and of course a 2.5 millimeter jack in here. These jacks are um, inexpensive and very easy to break. And of course Sennheiser probably used a fairly inexpensive jack in here. They have to. This is a, a low cost headphone. So what they did was they made the uh, this part of the headphone actually kind of pulls out and leaves a pocket here so when it's inserted into the headphone very tightly for one it has a nice it retains this nice design element but the oh, there is no strain on that jack internally when i wiggle this around it's very tight in that little pocket so they did a good job of taking inexpensive stuff and then making sure it worked really well <clears throat> so i thought that was cool also comes with a very flimsy little plastic or uh, fabric uh, bag. No surprise with a $60 headphone, but they did include a bag rather than not include it at all. So that's, that's good on them. Um, I think this headphone is amazingly good uh, sonically for its price. Um, it uh, has very good bass extension, goes all the way out pretty much flat down to 10 Hertz. So, 
Uh, it, it's got great base extension, but it's not elevated at all. So it's, it is pretty much ruler flat from a thousand hertz on down. Um, so as a consequence to my ears, I would like a little more bass. I like that harm and hump in the bass of two or three dB. Um, nonetheless, a lot of people don't uh, think that hump is necessary and and my experience with these headphones is, is that I wasn't disturbed by the bass level it's just that I could have used a little more so it's a little bit bass light to me um, and to some it won't be at all if you're a bass head this is probably not a headphone for you uh, the treble up above 1k it, it tends to roll off some uh, the the if, when you first put these headphones on the, the first thing that you notice is it's a little bit rolled off up on top it's in um, but it's not a lot rolled off on top and the shape of the curve is uh, pretty close to where it needs to be um, in order to be it, it's just not as big a feature as it's going through that part of the curve so yeah it's rolled off but it has the right relative shape and as a consequence voices sound very human voice like it's not like they sound the voices sound veiled it's not like they have uh, some sort of a over emphasis in in the uh, presence region or anything like that. It's just got a, a, a solid sort of natural feel to it. The h very high treble um, is uh, good, but um, again, a little bit low in level. So the whole uh, treble area is a little bit rolled off. Um, but um, the most important thing about this headphone is that when you listen to it, it, it feels like it's being truthful to the original sound. Your mind relatively, because it's, it's, it's uh, sort of uh, internally coherent, in, in other words, yeah, the, the level's a little low, but it's doing all these changes rather smoothly and there's no peaks or valleys anywhere. Um, what you end up is, is with, it's something quite truthful and, and your brain accommodates to it very rapidly. And I found myself just listening to the music uh, relatively easy through these headphones without, um, once I was accommodated, without having a sense of any one aspect of its character getting in the way or being overemphasized or anything like that. It's a nice, truthful sounding headphone and, and um, though a little rolled off on top. And, and just a little, not a lot. Um, certainly cymbals sound relatively natural and and so on and so forth. So I thought that was a great um, outcome. Uh, I did compare it to a lot of headphones in its price range. The, the headphone that's up on the wall of fame now is the Creative Orvana Live, um, the original one, not the number two. Uh, and it had a, a, uh, a bass emphasis and a treble response that was closer to a normal level, but <clears throat> the character of the bass was much more murky and, and, and lacked tightness and, and um, uh, relative to these headphones. This headphone sounded cleaner in those areas, although maybe not quite in the, at the right level. Similarly, um, the treble on the cow was uh, um, a little uh, squeaky sounding, just drew attention to itself. So I, I, this headphone is definitely going to go up on the wall of fame and replace the Creative Orvana Live up there. I also compared it to the Audio-Technica ATH-M50X, which is a headphone I like very much. It's about twice as much. Street price is something like $129 or, or thereabouts right now. And um, it uh, did perform better. It had better bass slam. It had better levels and, and so on and so forth. Um, but it wasn't a lot better. It certainly wasn't twice as good as the price would suggest. So I think the point there is that this headphone really starts the diminishing curves curve, uh, diminishing returns curve earlier uh, than previously. Um, previously, most when you went up to the Audio Technica ATH M50X, it was it was clearly quite a bit better. And in this case, it wasn't. I also compared it to the Sennheiser HD 569, um, which which had some flaws that were a little more obvious um, to this headphone. For example, there's a, a a tighter spike around 3K, which gives it a kind of a sound, a, a kind of a, a, a I, for lack of a better word, a, a little ringy sound around that region um, that this headphone didn't have. So the so the uh, 569 had some of these characteristics that I could pick out more easily as as well. That's not quite right. 
On the other hand, it seemed to have this coherence that really good headphones have this liquidity and coherence and nuanced resolve and these kinds of things. So it was, uh, it was more pleasant to listen to, even though it might be a little more obviously flawed in a couple of places, which was quite interesting. Whereas this headphone, um, it's not like the flaws were uh, necessarily op terribly obvious other than the fact it was a little rolled off, but, but, um, uh, as a whole, it, it just didn't have this um, liquid, liquid sense or something like that. It's not something you can put your finger on very easily. What causes that um, this, this headphone is less nuanced and then the other headphone is, is more um, uh, resolving and liquid sounding. Uh, so the bottom line is, is that uh, uh, this, the 569 was more pleasant to listen to, but this was still very competent. And, and in the end, what happens is, is that here's three headphones, four headphones with the Creative or Vinyl Live that come close to neutral. And, and then the differences that start appearing in terms of the subjective opinion um, are less related to kind of the measured stuff than it is to the, the, the subjective impression that that okay the Sennheiser had some more flaws but somehow it turned out to be more liquid and pleasant sounding which is very interesting to me I think I'm gonna write about that next week um, we'll uh, I'll, I'll save that to then you just have to read the article when that time comes out so the Sennheiser HD 471 a really solid little headphone um, I, I want to very much encourage any folks out there who are uh, aspiring uh, media producers uh, uh, people on social media and people who are producing their own music and things like that that when you if you're looking for your first uh, good headphone but you really can't afford big bucks this is a great headphone to consider uh, I think this headphone would be great for people just getting into um, audio production in some way and and it will really serve you well because it's so truthful so yep wall of fame uh, at the $60 price point under 100 bucks the creative Arvana live is gonna drop away um, this headphone is better in every way including the build quality the, this the build quality of this is just way better than the Creative Arvana Live I, in terms of yeah you're not gonna do this to a Creative Arvana Live <clears throat> um, I really encourage you to have a listen to this sometime soon even if you're not in the market for a sixty dollar headphone but it's it's a it's a treat to hear something that sounds this good at this low price and certainly keep it in mind for this holiday gift giving season because this is a great opportunity to give somebody good sound um, at a fairly low price affordably so yeah Sennheiser 4 HD 471 I and G for Apple and Android phones and I hope you get to listen to one soon we'll see you guys next time